Turnitin is now available to NLU instructors and students through the Desire to Learn Dropbox. This video, the first of two parts, shows you how to get started by adding Turnitin to a Dropbox folder in your course. To add Turnitin Originality Checking to a D2L Dropbox in your course, go to Dropbox in the course navbar. Locate the particular folder that you would like to use originality checking with and use the black triangle to access the drop down menu and edit folder. Now I'm in the Dropbox folder. This is a Dropbox I've already fully set up in D2L, and I'm just going to add originality checking to it. But I would see these same options if it were a brand new Dropbox. So here I check originality. And I could be done with that, just save and close. But I'd like to tweak some of the settings. So I scroll down to the bottom, and as I scroll you can see that I've got already my D2L rubric in place, and I've got my assignment instructions, and this Dropbox now knows that it's got to generate a Turnitin originality report. To set some more specifics, I click Show Advanced Originality Checking Options. Let's see what that gave me. Here is the first thing I want to change, and I'm almost always going to change this. Allow submitters to see originality reports. Yes, I use Turnitin as a teaching tool, and seeing their own paper aligned against a source they have used is an excellent teaching tool for my students. I'm going to set the availability to make sense in terms of the assignment dates. And for frequency, yes, I'm going to keep automatic originality checking on all submissions. I don't want to target particular students. Now, what will my students' papers be checked against? This is a database of other user papers, and these are current and archived internet articles. Yes, I've seen plenty of student content come from the internet. Also, periodicals, journals, and publications, which are likely to be references appropriate and inappropriate for student research papers. So all of these are good with me. Index files for originality checking. What this means is that my students' papers papers can be used as a comparison to other submissions. The information in those papers will not be seen, but there would simply be a report to the instructor of another course that there was a match to a student paper. My student's paper would not be shared, although the other instructor could contact me for more information. I'm going to check that for this paper because this is the final submission of this paper. There's not an earlier draft. For a term paper, I might set up a draft folder where students could submit their paper for formative feedback, which could include an originality check. If I did that, I would not want to index that draft paper because in my next Dropbox, when the student submitted their final version, their own draft would be the one that would come up as the best match. And that's not something that is useful. So for a draft, I wouldn't do this. For a final submission, I would. I'm happy with my settings. I save and close. There is my edited Dropbox folder with a visual indication that originality check has been enabled for it. Students will also see that originality check has been enabled. With one click, we added Turnitin originality checking to this Dropbox folder. With a couple more clicks, we customized our settings. When we saved and closed, Something magical happened behind the scenes with D2L talking to turn it in and making all the connections that needed to happen. Now, if we edit this folder again, we'll see a few more settings that we can tweak. I use the black triangle drop down to choose edit folder. I scroll down where I saw my originality checking before, and now I have other options which will open in a new window and that window will actually take you to the Turnitin site. And if you haven't been to that site in a while, it will ask you to agree to the terms of service of Turnitin. A lot of the settings here are the ones you've already set in the D2L Dropbox editing, and you don't need to set them all over again. Since I have both a due date and an end date in D2L, and these are different from each other, the date I've chosen here is my due date, 
But that means if students turn work in between the due date and the end date, they're not going to get checked for originality unless I either make this my end date instead of the due date, or I set the ability of Turnitin to work with papers that are turned in after the due date. And that's what I'm going to do. Allow submission after the due date, yes. Just about everything else in here is something I've already set to my satisfaction inside of D2L. Let's take a quick look at Grademark. Grademark is Turnitin's easy drag and drop commenting tool for paper markup. In addition to its basic functions, it has some special features. The first one listed here you do not need. Do not create a rubric in Grademark. You need to continue to use your D2L rubrics, which connect to your D2L grades and substantiate them. So ignore the rubric. There is a grammar checker that is in beta. I don't care to use it, but if you are interested, you can try it out. It is in beta and it's not something we're able to support directly. I'm leaving everything down here alone, except for my allow submissions after the due date. And unfortunately, that doesn't have an end to it. It's not like my D2L end date. Submit. After I click Submit, I'm taken to a page inside of Turn It In, but there is nothing I need to do here, and I simply close that page now. I save and close my D2L Dropbox. Now all I have to do is wait for those student papers to come in.